dear Calgary students, I just got some in and out gift cards for you guys. $10 each. To win one of this, just make sure you get 100% on the test this week. You can do it. Good luck. So for my Cal 1 class, only one student got 100% on the first test. And for my Cal 2 class, only one student got 100% on the first test. Both of them will be getting the in and out gift cards I promised it. So congratulations to Anton and also Alex. Great job on the first test. And now you might be wondering what we are going to do for the second test. Don't worry, I will tell you guys at the end. But before that, I have some issues that I want to talk about. This student, he got the first question wrong. Everything else is okay. So he ended up with a 96%. And when I saw that, I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my god. And before anything, let's take a look at the first question to see how it is. So the question is asking us to find all the vertical asymptotes for the function 2x minus 6 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. And here we have the options. Well, as you can see, right here the denominator can be factored. Yeah, we will just get x minus 3 times x plus 1, right? Yeah. But do not just set the button to be zero because remember for the vertical asymptote, we have to make sure in this kind of situation we want to get a non-zero number on the top over zero. Alright? And the truth is if you look at the top 2x minus 6, we can factor out a 2 and then we get x minus 3. So in fact, if you just say x is equal to 3, no. That's going to give you a zero over zero case. That's actually a removable discontinuity. That removable discontinuity at x equals three. So this is not what we want. All right, you actually have to cancel this, and you just have to consider that x plus one. You make it equal to zero. So in fact, x is equal to negative one. So only vertical asymptote is at x equal to negative one. So the answer is B. Just that. Um, yeah, unfortunately he missed it, but I will tell you guys what I will do for him later on. Okay, so this question is question number seven on my Calc 1 test. Well, we are given this limit and we are trying to see that this limit represents what? And of course, this is actually the definition of the derivative question, right? And if you take a look at this right here, we have h is approaching 0. So this right here should remind you limit as h approaching 0 of a function. And if we have a plus h minus f of a divided by h, like so, then this right here is just going to be f prime of a. So once we know this, we can just compare. And we see that a is just 125. And then, of course, the function is going to be the cube root because 125 plus h right here. So the function is just the cube root of x. And the intended answer is c. Done deal, right? But the truth is, I accidentally made b an answer as well. <laughs> Do you guys see it? I know this is bad, but like, yeah, this is just uh, a small mistake on my end. So, but let's talk about this first. If we look at this by using the following definition, we'll just put it as f prime of 0 being equal to the limit as x approaching 0. And then we do the function, which is f of x and then minus f of 0 and then over x minus 0. Guess what? This is going to be the same as that, except for right here we use x, right? But here we are using h which is actually the same thing. So it's just a notation issue, but yeah. B is also the answer, but the original intention was C. I didn't make this wrong enough. Take a look at his integral here. You see that he has two inverse tangent of W, good. But when he did the final substitution, he forgot to write down the two. And everything else, it's perfect. Everything else is perfect. So, what, what do you think I should do? So let's take a look at the solution for this question. The integral of 1 over the square root of e to the x minus 1. This right here is actually not so bad. 
if we use the right method, which is tricks up. And if you do u equal to the bottom, and the whole thing, okay, the square root of e to the x minus 1, this right here is going to be the quickest way to finish this question. So let's go ahead and just finish that. Let me just go ahead and differentiate this on both sides. Differentiating square root of this, we get 1 over 2 square root of the inside. And then, of course, we have to use the chain rule, right? Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be e to the x. And then don't forget the dx right here. And now I will multiply the reciprocal on both sides. So we get dx being equal to that. And then we have the du. So now we can take this integral to the u world. We will just have the integral 1 over. The whole thing here is the u. And then dx is that. So I will see. I will put down 2. And you see that this right here. It's actually the same as u. So we will have 2u over e to the x. And uh, we have the u. This is pretty good because we see that the u and u cancel. And now be really careful. This right here is the integral. We can put a 2 in the front. And we have 1 over e to the x. And then in the u world. So can we really integrate this? The answer is no, because e to the x is not invited in the u world. So the way that we have to you know, handle this is that, take a look right here. We are going to square both sides so that we can say e to the x minus 1 is equal to u squared. And then we can just add 1 on both sides. So we get e to the x is equal to u squared plus 1. And now, take a look at the e to the x. We can just change that to u squared plus 1. So that's the idea. And this right here is the inverse tangent of u. So we have 2 times inverse tangent of u. And u is that. So let's just go ahead and put that back like this. And then we'll just add a c. And this is it. And yeah, we do have a 2 right here. So what am I going to do for this student and also the other student, right? I am going to take away one point from him and I'm actually going to give him an $8 gift card to in and out And for the Cal1 student who got 96 earlier, he will get a $6 gift card to in and out This is for the people who got 100% on my first calculus test. Well, I got Cheesecake Factory gift card this time and this time it's $20. If you can get 100% on exam 2, then you get one of this. You can do it, good luck. And just to make this super super fun, maybe not for the students, but rather for myself, I'm going to add an extra multiple choice question to my Calc 1 Calc 2 test, so that the total is going to be 104 points for my Calc 1 test, and 105 points for my Calc 2 test. They have to get exactly 100 points in order to get a gift card. <laughs> so they cannot just answer all the questions and get like 104, 104, 105 and get a gift card. No. It has to be exactly 100 points. Yep. Yep. And I will keep you guys updated. So yeah, that's it.